Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have every right to praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. We have life right now. Yes. Mighty God, no matter what's happening around us, we have the mind to serve the Lord. Amen. Let's give God some praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give your voice and praise. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels, Angels bow before Lord. him. Thank I'm you, so Jesus. Grateful, oh God, to be able to raise my hands. Hallelujah. And to say praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a voice one more time to worship. One more time. Lord. Thank Lord. you, Jesus. Just to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Lord in the last bishop says, when we think about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. Just to be a father, we can think about it. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And that we want to praise the Lord. Think about how many things have happened. Thank to you, us Jesus. Today. Oh my God, so many near misses today. Yes. But glory to God, he's awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. We bless the name, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. One more time, Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. What a we wonderful approach word. your mercy. Lord, I pray as we come before you, Lord, you will receive us, Lord. We come, Lord, because you have so many things that have happened to us, but here we are, standing before you. We come one more time, oh God, and hear your word. We come, oh God, to open our hearts, oh God, to receive what you tell us tonight. Lord, that which you give to us, Lord. Oh God, it's your word that we live by. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And so, oh God, the word oh God, is spoken tonight. I pray, oh God, to bless, oh God, our teacher, our kind of mighty Bishop Richardson. What does he expound the words? Glory to God. Oh God, I pray you speak to him tonight. Let the words come out, oh God, with power and might. And Lord, let the hearers smite God Almighty. Open your hearts to receive the word. Remember all of those are standing with you right now. And Lord, those are faith here. But I pray, oh God, that you will bring them faith. Yes, Lord. Those who can't make it to them, Lord. Oh God, we thank you, God Almighty, for your word. Oh God, is what keeps us. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Bless, I pray. Lord, take your control, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'll read in your ear in uh, Isaiah chapter 55. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Isaiah 55. Now read while you're following your Bibles. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. If you find Isaiah 55, say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll read. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do we spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for, what, for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in its fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me, here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, a nation and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and unto our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper the things where, to, where I sent it. For he shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. We'll read 13 together. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, to our Praise. pastor, 
and to uh, Evangelist uh, Richardson, all the saints that are standing. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Greetings. The Lord God in our midst right now. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Right this time, we'll turn the rest of our service over to our pastor in Jesus. Name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ here tonight. Praise God. Um, also to all those who are here, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Special greetings to those who are streaming live. Indeed, we are grateful, the Lord, for this privilege that once again we can come in the house of the Lord to magnify His name. Praise God. Um, let me just remind you, as I always do, according to the word of the Lord, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, praise God, that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. Be reminded, saints of God, you don't have to hear a sound Amen. to hear the word of the Lord. Remember when you're reading to yourself, you don't talk. Mm -hmm. You're feasting. Okay. So, um, when the Lord spoke in an audible voice, or you hear him by looking at his word, just make sure you take the word of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, as it as is. Because it is life and it is light. The word of the Lord only work when you apply it. Mm -hmm. Amen? If you just read it and leave it there just like another book, it will not do anything for you. You have to look at the word and apply them to your life. Praise his holy name. You remember Jesus' disciples went out and they couldn't do any miracles? When they came back to Jesus, Jesus said to them, this kind go in the house, but by prayer and fasting. So one will not work without the other. Just like he said to Nicodemus, Mother, that I say to you, must be born again. And he did not just leave it there. He said, you must be born of water and spirit. Praise God if both is not finished, of course. He said you could not even see the kingdom, let alone to enter therein. And so whatever the Lord said, saints of God, um, though it might seem or sound impossible, just like Jesus' mother said to those who um, was complaining that the wine ran out, he said, listen, my son is here. What have I told you to do? Just do it. Blessed be the name. I do believe that Mary know the power of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mary knew the ability of Jesus. And so she do believe that whatever he said would happen. And you saw what happened in the scripture, right? Yeah. It was natural water until Jesus prayed. <laughs> until he prayed. Yes, right. mm -hmm. It was just water. But after he prayed and said, serve, mm -hmm. something happened. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So even saints of God, if we just take the word just like it is written here, and it's, it's just English and nothing more. It, it, it won't do anything. It's not doing anything for us. We have to see the word of the Lord as God himself. All right, we're going to look at... Um, how many love the word of the Lord? Amen. 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 To love the word of the Lord is to love life. Amen. Amen. Is to be hopeful. Because the only hope that we have is not in the upcoming election. Mm -hmm. Or whoever is, is elected. Amen. President. No sir, no ma'am. Our hope is in King Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our hope is built and nothing less. Yes, you can say it. Jesus, blood and righteousness. Because we know everything that's going on here is a temporary. Amen. Even our looks is temporary. 
Yes, but even how we feel yeah, is temporary. temporary. Our strength is temporary. Yes, my God. We have gone through so many generations, and every time we pass up, um, up, up, up the hill there, Cypress Hill, it reminds us, <laughs> amen, that we are just here for a period of time. By appointment, divine appointment, but after that there comes a judgment. There is hope in God, brothers and sisters. Let us be the hope and things eternal. eternal and hold to God and changing hand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, what we're going to look at tonight, I cannot be lost regardless of what I do. I cannot be lost regardless of what I do. And this is one of the excuses of those who are backslide, backslider. I cannot be lost regardless of what I do. The, 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 the scripture asks the question, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Jesus Christ is the savior of the world regardless of how men believe, regardless of how they look at him as just a man, praise God. But we know, not just believe, but we know that he is the savior of the world, not just because we read it, but we have experienced the power of God. Those of you who have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know that something happened. Don't you? Amen. You know that something happened. You know that there is some transformation took place. Especially that initial um, time when you received the Holy Ghost. I don't know how you sleep at night and when you wake up the next morning. How the entire surrounding look. How it feels. I know my experience. I don't know what yours. Praise God. And every now and then rise and take me back to that place. We are first received it. Don't forget it because the Bible let us know that it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It must dwell in you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so when he descends from glory, is that same spirit will cause the change. I cannot be lost regardless of what I do. Romans 6, I'm going to read from verse 16. Romans 6. From verse 16. You there? As your father, knowing now that to whom you yield yourself servant to obey is servant ye, or to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, he became the servant of righteousness. Now look at this verse. Is this possible? Don't answer verbally. Answer this question from the heart. Being then made free from sin, Ye became the servants of righteousness. Is this possible? If you don't believe this, there is no way you can be sin free. Mm -hmm. 
the, 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 right, the Bible is clear that the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins. It also states in Romans that we should not be conformed, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How many times our mind need to be renewed? Every day is something that you have to work on consistently. Consistently. Let me read this again. Verse 17. But God be thanked that you were the servant of sin. Remember when you used to serve sin? Just sin? Yeah. I always said sin or can sin. Mm -hmm. Because sin is just sin. So it's not that you're born in sin and keep doing things that is sinful. sinful. What I mean is that there is no special category that they're going to put that one in and say, I just commit a sin. I'm not. It's just sin. And the wages of sin is death. So if you're born in sin, you have a full pay. Without the second birth. Regardless of what you do. So you might look at one sin. And say this one is greater than the other one. But hell is just hell. As heaven is heaven. Jesus Christ came for one purpose. The angel was sent to earth to Mary. Tell Mary she shall conceive with a son. Call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. If you belong to the Lord, he comes in your life to save you from your sin. From your sin. Yes, from your sin, from my sin, for our sins. That's the reason why he came. So he said, but ye have obeyed from the heart. Now you have to obey the doctrine from the heart which was delivered you. Which doctrine was delivered you? The same one that Peter preached. The same one that was, was delivered to Peter by Jesus Christ. He said, listen, I'm giving you the authority of earth and heaven. Whoever you, you let in, in the earth. We've been let in the heavens. And whoever you shut in the earth. We shut in heaven. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of authority. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in order for us to make it brothers and sisters. There is a form of doctrine. That must be obeyed. So if it is delivered to you, the only way you can be sin free is to obey the doctrine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This reference to the gospel truth, Paul is here making a clear by his arguments. Here Christianity is a picture on the form of a mold or a die in which men are cast. And from which they are stamped with the image of God and of Christ. And are made the holiness of God by the Holy Spirit. Now you know, um, like water takes the shape of its container. So water is shapeless. Right? But if you have a container, it doesn't matter how, you know, how many curves the, the container have. The water will take that shape. So, our mold is Christ. So, we are shapeless without God. We are without form without God. But if we are going to become like Him, we have to take His form. That's over the name of the Lord. So, if the water chose to be square, and some container is diamond and refuse to go in the diamond it will never 
looks like diamond. So what am I saying? Believe from the heart and obey the form of doctrine which has delivered you. Being then made free from sin. Now this is the question, set free. It means set free. Now, you can be free, you can be set free but yet bound. But Paul is to emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but yourself can free your mind. If you are tied long enough, even when you are loose, sometimes you don't even know that you're loose. You're caged long enough that even when you're let out, you're still in the cage. Right. <laughs> You're born in sin and stay in that shape for so long. Till even when Jesus set you free, you're still bound. You just cannot believe that you are free. And you keep going back. You keep conforming other than transforming. Like gravity feed. So we have to believe, brothers and sisters, you know, it's so good to be true, though, yeah. that we are set free. It's so good to be true. Mm -hmm. So it takes something you have to believe. And it's more than believe, you have to have faith in God. Amen. You know, saints of God, have you said you're not righteous, and I know that, but God look at us and say you're righteous. Why don't you believe it? Yeah. Believe it and practice righteousness you have to practice you have to practice do you know if you walk if shattered and you practice to walk straight you can walk straight you see those manner many of them did not walk like that but they went to some school and they trained them to walk and after a while you see them walk you believe it's your daughter. You say, my God, that's my daughter walking like that. That's not how she used to walk. Because they're trained. So there is a certain walk in God. There is a certain talk in God. There is a certain attitude. There, there is a certain um, way of life. You have to practice. You have to practice even to listen. You have to practice how to associate yourself. You have to practice how to operate in group. Mm -hmm. Yes, everything you have to practice. You, you, just, you will not just go and just take an exam and just pass it. It takes practice, mm -hmm. time and study. Mm -hmm. Not just one time. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, if I should ask, how many Bible verses do you know? Many of you might not even know too. Maybe Jesus wept. And I ask you where you find it. How many of you know where Jesus wept was found? If you know, just raise your hand. It's what I'm saying. Many don't know. And that's the key text of the Bible. You don't know where Jesus Christ is taken from? All right, you see what I'm saying? So, if you are, if you want to be in the know, don't just read. You have to study. Okay, there's a difference between reading and studying. Right? Because you can read one verse, and from that one verse, you can write an entire paragraph. You can write a, t a page. You can write a book. I give you one word, S-E-T. That is found in Genesis, and from that one word, you can write an entire page of the meaning of set. So what I'm saying, being made free from sin, ye became the servant. So for us to be, become the servant of righteousness, if you are the servant of righteousness, what do you serve? 
Righteousness. You're the servant of righteousness. If you're the servant of the prime minister, who do you serve? If you're the servant of the president, who do you serve? If you're the servant of righteousness, who do you serve? Remember you were the servant of sin. So they were serving sin. So we cannot work part-time. Part-time. God is demanding full-time. So you have to leave that to do this. Make sense? Because in the earth saints of God, uh, we are born in sin. But we are now practicing to go to a city where righteousness is the order of the day. Righteousness is the norm. Oh God. Holiness is the norm. The rule of the king is the norm. So, I was saying, um, when the church in the night, and I was saying, listen, whatever we're, we're, we're planning to do in heaven, don't believe that we're going there to, or to start it. We have to start it here and perfect it here. By the time you get to heaven, the choir won't be rehearsing. The choir will be singing at peak level. Oh God. So when you go to heaven, you're going to dance like David dance, right? But if you don't dance like David dance here, there is no way you're going to read heaven to dance like David dance. You have to learn to dance here. If we don't have peace with our... How many, if I should ask, how many have peace with yourself? Don't answer me. <laughs> don't answer. Just, just, just answer. just answer in your mind. How many have peace with yourself? Because if you don't have peace with yourself, there is no way you can have peace with nobody else. If you don't love and respect yourself, there is no way. Because you can only give what you have. And so the Bible tells us, let the peace of God rule in the heart. Right? So if the peace, not, not just your peace, you know, because human peace is pieces. Peace of God. The peace of God, that's the one. There's a difference in them. Because you have got a righteousness of the general that's rightful doing. Whatever you do right. If you do ten right, you're righteous. If you do more than one right, you can be called righteous. But you have the righteousness of God versus Carnegie's righteousness. You see that? All that he was doing, but he was the same. I, have, I can hardly pass this verse. Being made free. Mm -hmm. Lord help me. Jesus. Can you imagine saints of God being in a state where there is no sin in your life? None at all? No carnal nature? No bad mind? No unforgiveness? No hypocrisy? The love of God, you love everybody regardless of. If you are stoned, you are praying, Father, forgive. Church, I'm not telling you I'm there, but I believe it, and I'm heading in that direction. And if any one of us is going to get there, you have to first believe it. Because if you don't believe it, there is no way you can achieve it. Ye became the servant of righteousness. Many of the saints of God is, is serving righteousness, right? You are doing righteous things. And you can count them. Sometimes you can get up a white page and write all the righteous things you have been doing. 
I'm not just talking about human righteousness and the righteousness of God. You have a drive. You put away your food and you fast. And you, you, you do the kind of fast that the Lord asks you for. Not to face some wickedness. Not to see people perish. But to pray that the Lord save and transform. Mm -hmm. And renew mind. Because if God takes away the evil from a person, they become the servant of God. If God take away the darkness out of the heart and the blackness out of people, they become the servants of God. If God take away the hate, praise God, a person of a heart of love, blessed be the name of the Lord. So let us pray that God do what God does best and what God all that what only God can do. Because He alone have the ability to transform. And to change the lives. How do I know that? Because it changed mine. Because I know I wasn't like this. I know. I know. And you need to know you. You need to know your yesterday. If your yesterday and today is the same. And if your last week and this week is the same. You need to take stock and know what's happening. If your yesterday and today is the same, you need to take stock. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If there was a time in your life when someone said, Hey, you said B. And you're going to see D. And it's still happening. You really have to take stock. Right? The Bible declares that we should put on the wall armor that we may be able to the fiery darts that get coming. Mm -hmm. So I said um, that you will feel impact if you have the armor. Oh, yeah. You shouldn't feel the dart in your heart. Amen. You shouldn't bleed. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't bleed. You shouldn't feel it. And the commentary testified. Uh, the brother did this and I feel it in my heart. Oh, it's reached your heart. <laughs> Wasn't the arm out of? It shouldn't reach your heart. I can't, I can't, I can't even, I can't sing in the choir today because, you know, it's in my heart. <laughs> oh, God. That was Jesus. Making sense? A lot of sense. We have to prepare, brothers and sisters. Before you go to the field, you prepare. You can feel impact, but it shouldn't reach the heart. If someone squeezes you, it shouldn't be lemon juice. We are sweet orange. I speak of the verse 90, verse 80. Verse 19. I speak after the mother of, of, of men be because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members as servants of uncleanness unto iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members as servants to righteousness unto holiness. Remember in sin we used to use our members. What is our members? Tell me some, some of your members. Eyes. Your hands. Eyes. Your eyes. Alright, let, let, let's, let, let's take, take, take time with me. Take, take time with me. Your mouth. Right? You used to use your mouth. Rough. Right? Just talk and answer. And clap back. Right? But now the Lord touched that mouth. So how is it used? Different clap back. <laughs> this is what I'm saying to you. Let us just let us just let us just judge ourselves by the heart. Look at church. This is no joke, it's a serious thing. That's true. Uh, you are who you are when you're by yourself. The best person you are. Is when you're by yourself and you're not alone you should not be lonely 
take stock and see if there is changes taking place in your life. Mm -hmm. Because if we are preparing ourselves, church, we're going to get it. And we're going to shock and surprise our own self. What comes out of our mouth and how we react or we use our members when the tests come. Here we say, servant unto uncleanness mm -hmm. and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now, that's yesterday, but today it should be different. Yeah, Righteousness unto holiness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Possibly because of the weakness of the flesh, as ye have yielded your body, your body and members to sin and uncleanness, you must now do likewise to righteousness unto holiness. Praise the whole world, things that you use the eyes to watch. Then, and God the things. And when you watch those things, what happened to your entire being? You are captivated and you are carried away and you are lost the battle. You are there alone in the room, but you are not alone. Many evils and devils and spirits. Yes. But now, you yield your members as your eyes. You have to be careful what you, what you look at. What you see, because it's a um, developer influence and the window. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful, you know, when the dust is blowing or you open the window. Yeah? When the storm is blowing, you don't open the windows. Mm -hmm. You close them. Shut and tight. And your eyes is the window, you know that, right? Yeah. You have to know when to close them. <laughs> the window open then. For when ye were the servant of sin, watch this. Ye were, help me, free from. But now you see when the righteousness come, the war. It's a war, you know? It's a war. So there was a time when we were free from righteousness. So when righteousness come, we have to start walk away mm -hmm. from sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's say we start at um, 1090. 90 sin, 10 righteousness. After a while, it becomes... Help me. 80 20. Right. But if you don't take stock, you don't know. You have to watch it. And it go all the way till it become 50 50. Right? Dead eat. And if you press righteousness on in the morning, it becomes 60 40. If you press it in the morning, it becomes 30 70. Then 80 20, 90 10. Till before it, it just hold out. Mm -hmm. Yes, and now you become the servant right. of righteousness. Then you realize when someone curse you, you are blessing them. And you wonder, how did I do this? You want somebody cursing you, and normally you'll get upset and vexed and, and short temper, you feel your heart going, pumping, and the blood is running through, and the person comes close, you feel your fist splintering, but all of a sudden, you don't feel like you feel like blessing them. Mm -hmm. And if they come close, you don't feel like tongue, you feel like laying your hands on them and praying for them. Something's happening. Yes. It's a process, brother. It, 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 it takes a lot of practice. Yeah. Don't believe Stephen just get up one morning and, and, and start serve God and next day they stone him. And he was praying for them. He was doing something. He was doing something that wasn't in the public eye. Because can I tell you, when a tree is growing up, it needs to grow down. 
the visible part of the tree. You cannot determine by that. And this is why the slightest wind in America, the trees have turned over because I, I realize when the root up, all they have is sprang, sprang. but no mere root going down. If you are strong in the Lord on the surface, you run the aisles and you preach and you teach and you sing and do all sorts of things and nothing going down. As soon as the wind blow, you turn right over. So before you think about going up, yes, go, down. go down. And I often said, as uh, I used to do uh, building back home, and I, I said this before, if you decide to build a, a house, if it's a one floor, then you have to know deep to go. But if you're going two, three, four, the higher you intend to go, is the deeper you have to excavate. Amen? So let's say it's a 20th floor. And normally a two floor go down four feet in the ground. Do you believe a 24th floor is only two feet? No. Some of these buildings like the World Trade Center maybe 10 floor or 24 under for it to go 100 and I must throw it up. Right? So if you want to go eyeing God before anybody see you visible on the surface, you make sure you're excavating in God. So by the time somebody see you budge above the soil, your foundation is already set. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because if you just grow, 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 grow high, this is why a lot of people just grow high before you know it. They disappear because there was no root. They rooted in themselves. And they rooted in self righteousness and self knowledge, but not in God. If you notice on Christ the solid rock, is that any root can go down in the rock. And that's also a mystery because God wants us to be rooted in the rock. This is why is that any and every material can sit on rock. It takes a special kind of a material. It must be in sincerity of heart because church, let me tell you, the wind is going to come. Yes, man. The wave is going to come. And the storm is going to come. And that will determine the strength of the building. That will determine who was the architect and the builder of that building. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 21 says, What fruit are ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Do you know that if we're not ashamed of our past sin, we are not the servant of righteousness. We, we should be ashamed. Anything you do or you to do that is sinful and ungodly, there is no boasting on this side. You must feel ashamed. Because you have been known, so you walked away from it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whatever it was, it is now a shame. You have now denied yourself. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, you lose your life. You gave away that. But now being made free from sin and became the servants of God, Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For us to have everlasting life, our fruit must be unto holiness. Whatever hard or tree must be holiness. 
must be the fruit of the Spirit. Church, we can, we can get there. And we have to strive to get there. It takes a lot of practice. You have to practice hard not to lie. Especially in this country. True. You have to, yeah, I said it again. Mm -hmm. You have to practice hard not to lie. And a lying lips is an abomination to God. Whether it's a big lie or a little lie. <laughs> so you have to practice hard not to be an abomination to God. It takes a lot. It takes prayer. It takes sacrifice. But if you are going to make it say to God, we have to work on these things. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. We have to work on these things. It's hard not to do sinful things. It's hard to love people who hate you and despitefully use you. Although Jesus says 70 times 7, but if somebody messes with you twice, you don't want to be around them anymore. It's hard, but it's possible. It's possible. Amen. It's possible. Because what? The end of all this is everlasting life. Steve was stoned to death. But guess what? Everlasting life. He saw God standing up to receive him. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. For the wages of sin is death. How many times over a hundred? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift of God is eternal life. Saints of God, we are gifted when we, um, when we can practice to be holy. And before you know it, we are moving from holiness to holiness. We are growing. Praise God. The things that used to cause us to stumble. Now we use them as stepping stone. Yes? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Alright, let's go to 8 verse 12. Chapter 8 verse 12. Therefore, brethren, a brother and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. In other words, you are not indebted to the flesh. So nothing the flesh asks for. You owe it anything. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the flesh cry out for things, you know. You know who your flesh address. <laughs> you name it. You know who your flesh will desire, you know, feel it, you know, wait, nothing. So if it asks for something and you give it, it's not because you owe it, it's because you want to give it. When you owe something, then you're supposed to pay it. It's your obligation to pay. But Paul is saying, you owe the flesh nothing. So if someone coming up to you and say, you owe me. And you know you don't hold a person anything. You don't have to pay anything. If you give the person something, it's up to you. Right? So you don't hold the flesh anything. Hmm? For if ye live after the flesh, what happened? And this dies, which die? Spiritual. More than spiritual. Eternal. Eternal. Right? Because we're born spiritually dead. And the natural death is pronounced upon every man, whether 
you are saved or unsaved. There will be a death. What is just that difference? But if he through the Spirit do mortify, and this word mortify, it's a form of crucifixion. It's, it's killing, mortify the deeds of the body. You shall live. You need to become a mortician. Kill this thing every day. If we don't sense of God, He gonna kill us. <laughs> there are some things that you don't deal with, they gonna deal with you. I'm telling you. There are some things in our lives. If you don't deal with it, it deal with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For as many as are led. By the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And sons of God is um, not, nothing to do with gender. We are children of God, just like I said, let us make man. We have to be led by the Spirit of God to become the sons of God. Praise is only name. Um, let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. Verse 16. When the Lord, um, in the Old Testament, there was a box that was um, that was made called the Ark of the Covenant, and in that Ark, um, there was some things that the Lord told. A servant to place in the box. And um, the absence of any one of those things would mean that the presence of the Lord would not be there. But with those things in the heart, the heart represent the divine presence of the Lord. Wherever the heart rests, God rests. And even in the heart, in the in the in the, um, the house of a enemy, the enemy get blessed. Because of the presence of the Lord. And when um when Dagon, the God, false God was placed in the temple, the presence of the Lord cut. So the same presence that give blessing can give cursing. Now, in our box is the Holy Ghost. Do you know that the harp was um, the laws was transferred from stones to where? The fleshy table of your heart. It's carved in our heart. So do you know that right now we are the harp of the covenant? Do you know where the harp is? All right, the heart was in the temple. Do you know now that we are the temple? Mm -hmm. So each and every one of us represent the temple. So here, hear the scripture. What verse did I just mention? Sixteen. Verse sixteen. Seventeen. I'm going to read from verse sixteen. 1 Corinthians 3, I'm going to read from verse 16. Know ye not, do you know? Do you know, do we know? That ye are the temple of God. And that 
the Spirit of God now visit you. The Spirit of God wants to visit you, right? You know what I mean? Listen to me. If you have an angel in your house and you don't treat the angel good, the angel is going to get up and walk out. So when you have someone in your house and you really, really want them to stay, what do you do? Treat them well. Let me tell you how we treat. Bishop coming this week. So make sure you wash all the sheets. Make sure you clean the house from top to bottom. Make sure you go and you draw some money and you fill the fridge. And you clean everything. And you, you change the curtain. You change everything because Bishop is coming for this week. Right? And every morning, you get up hurried and you cook Bishop right fast. And lunchtime and dinner time. But after one week, Tired of Bishop. Tired of Bishop. Bishop is not visit again. Bishop must get up. Make him one breakfast. Bishop must make him lunch. Because he's not stranger again. And you call and say, come, let me show you. And normally, the, 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 the plate of the, you know, when Bishop finished, he would take them up and wash them. But this time, Bishop, um, you know, after he, yeah, the, the soap is there and, and, and <laughs> you, you wash up your own stuff. <laughs> and it's clean up. <laughs> Just after a short time. That's how, that's how, that's how we treat God. <laughs> But you want him to stay, right? You want him to stay. So here it is. Do you know that ye are the temple? Do you really know? Do you know who lives in your house? Do you know what temple the scripture is talking about? Do you know when you get the Holy Ghost? You become God's dwelling place. Yeah. He said, I don't, I don't want to live in temple made with hand. God, no living on this. No. No, sir. And this is why sometimes when people talk as if, you know, the, the, the physical building is, is all that. It's going to hell and going to burn to ash. Amen. God came to save men, not building, not money, not car, not house. That car, he came to save us. So our top priority must be on the temple of the living God. So even though, yes, you're clean, the chair, you're clean this. But dust can fill this, but make sure there is no dust here. Because if we clean this from top to bottom on a heart full of dust, You're just dusty. Amen. So the priority must be set on the temple of God. Whose temple are ye? Not this. So let us make sure we prioritize the temple of God. Which temple ye are. When last it does it? When last it take a thorough cleaning from top to bottom? When last it really take stock and see how you live, how you treat others, your thought life, your intent, your service?
service attendance, your separation, your sacrifice, your consecration, when last you, you really touch it up. Because every woman, especially coming on to holiday, you clean the natural house from top to bottom. Right, Sister Richardson? And she pull up everything and she turn over everything. Right? So, every now and again, saints of God, we need to clean God's temple. True, true, true. Every day. I mean, clean it. Let him when him walk in and smell the room. Hallelujah. And give you a tight hug. Yes. Hallelujah. Because listen to me. I personally and she know. If I go in and there's no food on the place clean, they go. Two things. Get me ready for church on time. And the house clean. I tell her, you don't have to cook no food. But when I'm ready to go to church, you make sure you're ready. And that she have a problem with that. Need get me out of the house. Get me clothes. I need to get out. I will come hungry. It's okay. Church, make sure God temple clean. Not the part where other people see. Because he not live on the outside. He lives on the inside. And he don't want to come and knock. He wants us to walk in. And soak with you, God, and with Jesus. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Remember saying the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead must dwell in you. That's the one. And here the other verse. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. You see what we mess up? What we're doing? God's temple. God will burn we up. You see that? Tell us that keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Because God said, I will destroy you. Because where I live is heaven. God only lives in heaven. And heaven is a holy place. And if it's not holy, it's not heaven. And if it's not heaven, God cannot live there. He deal with mountain, he deal with heaven. He deal with clean place. Oh, God help us. So, if you know saints of God, let us clean it from top to bottom. Body, soul, and spirit. Clean up the soul. Clean up the spirit. I'm going to teach on the soul. Because yeah. someone doesn't understand what the soul is. Body, soul, and spirit. I must deal with all three of them. If any man, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. I'm stopping right here. Mm. Mm. You, see, you see why we cannot do 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 us, do ourselves? We have to do God. Amen. It's why we cannot think ourselves, we have to think God. Amen. Because if I tell you I will destroy you, you might get away. <laughs> but you're stronger than me. But if God said I will destroy you, <laughs> you will. Might be slow, and he's not slow. But there's a word in the Bible called B-E-T-I-M-E, B-Times. He rose up B-Time. 
God never destroys anything. And this is why saints of God, let me just encourage you. Just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That if he choose to exalt you in due time, yes. he will do it. But don't you ever try to exalt yourself. Let us live in a place where we lift up people. Esteem others higher than ourselves. Amen, amen. And every time you stoop to somebody, make sure it's to lift them up. Yes. But if you ever push them down, mm -hmm. we don't understand saying, let us serve God from the heart. Let us serve God with our conscience. Whatever we do, say, so, let us do it from our heart. Of God they love. Yeah. For God's sake. And for the cause of Christ. Because whether we, whether we die today or tomorrow, God's going to bring everything into judgment. Whether it be good or evil. So when you're going to think of me, make sure you think good. Because every thought and every intent of the heart, God will judge. And nothing is in. So I have to be careful what I think about you. When I say before you or behind you, if I tell you I'm praying for you and I don't, God know that. I'm lying. And I'm an abomination to the Lord. If I said to you, brethren, I love you, and I don't, you can believe it and feel good, but on my part, is an abomination to God. So whatever you do, saints of God, make sure you do it as hand to the Lord. Because the Lord knows. The Lord knows. Bless it with the name of the Lord. I think I have to pick this up back late next week. Because I just feel something here. Something here. And it really impressed on my heart. Is the temple. Just, just go for the rest of the week, saints. I don't think about that. You know, just, just look into the temple and see if any dust or any 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 any, any cobwebs. Something else I cannot see now. The little one them. Yeah, something can not see. Turn up at some place. Yeah. True. And you wonder how we all then get here. You just wipe it down, you know. Good. But tomorrow morning you're looking at God and say, and knit again. <laughs> when I bust away, make sure you kill the Nancy. True. Kill him. Mm -hmm. Not make him get away. God bless the brothers and sisters. We we are we are preparing yeah. for righteous. A holy city. A holy city. New Jerusalem where righteousness dwell is the heart of the day. I want to be near church. Can you, can you just imagine being in a city where righteousness dwell and everything there is righteous. Everyone is righteous. No doubting, no ifing, no wondering, mm -hmm. no pondering. That's what we're preparing for. So let's practice it here. All right? God bless you. I take a few questions. Um.